Howdy fellow reefers. Today I was hoping to show you more or less how I built this battery backup system for my 130.4 reef aquarium from Waterbox. It's been a project that I've thought about for a very long time. I have spent most of my hobby in the freshwater system. I could never quite justify a backup system like this, and I've always had the little bubblers that work great. In fact, since I'm in New Jersey, the worst of it was during Hurricane Sandy, where we had, I think, four days without electricity, and I had a 125 gallon freshwater aquarium. Pretty well planted and I just put four bubblers throughout and as far as I could tell everything was back to normal um, after four days and the batteries last actually it's double D's I think that they take and they're good backup to have anyway I think being fairly new to the reef and saltwater world I'm learning very quickly that it takes a long time to build a stable system. My tank has been running for about eight months now and I've invested more time and money than I have into really any other project that I've ever done. And getting to where I've gotten has proven challenging and very time consuming. So I decided to invest. It turns out that our aquariums use a lot of energy. My goal was to find a backup system that could keep my tank alive for days, bare bones, or fully functional for shorter periods, but I like to have the option. One of the ways I justified buying this system was because I can also operate large appliances in my home, such as the refrigerator, the dryer, and I am planning on being able to run our gas heater, potentially. What really sold me on batteries is two things. One, I live in a condo on the second floor, but the other thing is renewable energy. And this is part one of a two-part purchase. This is a full system, it's functional, and I can back up my aquarium for days. The plan is to add solar panels to this so I can actually recharge it for longer durations if need be. What's more is I made this a portable system. So it's actually attached to a dolly and will fit in the trunk of my car. Obviously getting it to where you need it is much easier. It's a very heavy system. One of the first things I had to determine was the kind of battery and it became very clear very quick to me that there are a number of factors that make lithium preferable. One is, again, if you're in a condo situation or an apartment like I am, you can't afford to have large lead acid batteries laying around inside your home, releasing hydrogen and potential for explosion. The lead acid batteries really can only be discharged to about 50% of their capacity, at which point the voltage starts to drop and you may not be able to operate whatever device it is, whereas a lithium ion battery can be discharged down to 20%. It maintains that voltage consistently. Uh, another difference is lead acid batteries generally have a lifespan of one to three years, whereas lithium ion batteries are more like five to 10 years. Lithium batteries are much lighter. So let's talk about the actual build. In this case, I have two batteries, each is 206 amp hours, which is the equivalent of 5,272 watts of stored energy. And the way I determined how big I would need is with the EB832, where I can monitor the usage of different devices. Then you have your voltage. In my case, it's a 12 volt system, which is the most common type and why I chose to go 12 volt instead of 24 or 48, because it's the most common binding replacement batteries and such in an emergency situation is simpler. Also, it's a low voltage so that if I did get shocked by it, it would be minimal and not quite on the level of danger like 24 or 48 would be. Then we have a inverter. This machine basically takes this 12 volt current, I'm not an electrician, so I apologize if I botched the terminology, but and 
converts it to 120 volt, which is what operates most of our devices in our home. And at the top of it, there are two outlets. Each outlet can generate about 1,500 watts. Then I have the battery charger. The learning curve where it becomes more complex is understanding the electrical cables, the sizing. I mean, if you look at the sizes of these cables, they're like this big. You know, we're used to the little 12 volt ones that we use for like the apex and such. So I've never worked with electrical cables that thick. But just to give you guys a couple of scenarios of like how long this would work with one of my systems. So the bare bones case scenario is what I consider just the circulation system. In my case, I'm looking to run my Vectra M2, which normally runs about 50 watts. My circulation pumps, which are, there's two of them, MP40s, and together they equate to about 40 watts. And then I have an Eheim 200 canister filter that I've actually loaded with media for my denitrification. And that's a constant 15 watts. So that's 105 watts that I'd need if I wanted to run it at its normal capacity. So I would take a total amount of wattage that I have here, which actually is less than what I quoted because there are a number of things you have to consider. It's advertised as a total of 5,272 watts. But we just talked about how you really only get 80% of that number. So I calculated that I would actually have 4,210 watts to work with. And then I will only get about 90% efficiency, which means I will lose some energy to the inverter, which is using energy to convert the energy from 12 volt to 120. So that's another 10% loss. Really, I'm looking at 3,795 watt hours that I have to work with. So if I try to keep my circulation system at normal capacity, So that's 3,795 watts divided by 105 watts. That would mean 36 hours. So then we're talking day and a half with full circulation. And the last example I want to give is where I try to run my whole system with lights and everything. In that case, the total is 1,142 watts to run my entire system. So that would last about three hours. Which probably for the average outage, that's all you need. But it just goes to show you just how much power you need in order to run a system, right? So this is a lot of capacity for a battery. The Ecotec Marine backup battery is 18 amp hours. This is about 216 watts. Anyway, those are just some real world examples of how I would use this system. If you have any questions about more details, I'd be happy to share what I've learned. There are lots of good videos out there. I put in a lot of reference information that I found as I was figuring this out. Thanks for watching.